The moon is perhaps the second most familiar world we know. We've been there, and we've observed it in the night sky for the whole of our existence as a species. In some ways, the moon hanging in the sky is a comfortable sight, familiar. But at the same time, it has always held a certain mystery. This idea that maybe someday we could actually go there and see an airless landscape, something we ended up doing in 1969 and will again. Dreaming of the mysteries of the moon is nothing new. Indeed, had it seen fruition, it was the target of what would have been the world's first search for alien life not of this earth. And no, it did not originate with the advent of SETI in the 20th century, but rather in France in the 1640s. Astronomer Adrien Azout considered building a giant telescope for the time with the express intent of searching the surface of the moon for wandering animals. So while familiar, it almost seems as though we've always expected the moon to in some ways present to us the unfamiliar. And as we've learned more, the moon is turning out to be far more strange and alien than we'd have imagined just even a few decades ago. So here are 10 strange unexplained mysteries of the moon. Number 10. The Raw Power of the Sun It's sometimes easy to forget, while sitting on a beach on a sunny day enjoying a drink festooned with a tiny paper umbrella, that the absolute monster lighting everything up is a full-blown star. Yes, the sun is a bona fide star, a giant ball of nuclear fusion bombarding its planets with all manner of radiation, that if Earth didn't have things like a magnetic field and an ozone layer to combat, we wouldn't be here. But the moon has no such luxuries. Recent modeling of the lunar surface and the relentless bombardment it takes from the sun shows that during solar storms, things can get especially bad, especially when the lunar surface has had to absorb eons of such storms. Even in areas where you wouldn't think, the radiation would have an effect, such as the bottom of a shielded crater. This is strange. What's thought to happen is that in the especially frigid polar regions of the moon, the sun's energy can cause the soil to take on an electric charge. This in turn can cause sparking, or electrostatic breakdown, even in permanently shadowed areas, such as cold, dark polar region craters. The discovery was made in part with the crater instrument aboard NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, which showed that electric fields in the top layer of lunar soil can become charged in this way. Essentially, these charges accumulate faster than they can be dissipated, setting the stage for sparking. This may have the effect of breaking the lunar soil in the polar regions down further than the normal lunar gardening process of micrometeorite impacts would do. This introduces two things. First is a previously unknown weathering process on some areas of the moon, but also a potential hazard. These same craters also hold water ice, and are among the best candidates for a permanent human lunar base as a result. But at the same time, if sparking is present during solar storms, it's possible that it could be a problem that the colony will have to protect against. Number 9. The Mystery of the Lunar Rocks One long enduring mystery about the lunar samples returned by the Apollo missions might now be solved, at least partly. Unfortunately, the explanation offered is quite complicated and may not be the last word on the matter. Geologists studying the lunar rock samples noticed that some of them appeared to have formed in a very powerful magnetic field, on level with that of Earth. Other rocks, however, appeared to have never been exposed to a magnetic field at all. This is a two-sided discrepancy. Firstly is that the Moon, even in its early partly molten state, should not have been large enough to produce a magnetic field powerful enough to account for what was seen in the evidence from the samples. If it did, say there was some highly unusual circumstances in the moon's interior that produced a larger than expected field, then why so many rocks that show no evidence of it? The answer may be that it was highly situational, where metals like titanium didn't completely sink to the moon's core, rather cooling before slowly sinking to the outer core. Huge chunks of that cool material coming into contact with the molten inner core may have created the conditions of starting up the moon's convection after periods of dormancy, right at the time any such dynamo should have shut down. This could create an intermittent magnetic field that affects rocks that are solidifying during that period. 
but does not affect rocks formed during the dormancy periods. What may still be a problem for this hypothesis, however, is that this process doesn't seem all that likely to have produced extremely powerful magnetic fields, almost out of nowhere. This mystery may well flare up again, as we further explore the lunar geology with future human missions collecting a larger sampling. Number 8. The Lunar Swirls The mystery of magnetism on the moon isn't just limited to the rocks returned by missions to the moon. One particularly enigmatic, but perhaps little known feature of the moon are the lunar swirls, which are found all over the moon. These things are weird. They appear to be made of material of high albedo, or high reflectivity, but often occur with material of especially low albedo right next to them. They tend to be swirl-like in shape, and they seem to overlay other types of lunar features, in that one may run right across a crater and then into uncratered areas, suggesting that they are made up of a thin upper layer of material deposited after the cratering. Very little else is known about these features. But one strong candidate explanation are some kind of relation to known magnetic anomalies on the moon. What causes these magnetic anomalies is unknown, but one idea is that lunar lava tubes might become magnetic as they cooled, but ultimately it's still an open question. The problem is the swirls don't always happen. You'll see a swirl around one magnetic anomaly, but not another. It's unknown why one localized weak magnetic field would do this, whereas an identical one not far away does not. Stranger, there seems to be a connection between these anomalies and impact craters, but are antipodal, meaning that a huge impact crater on one side of the moon can form an anomaly on the exact opposite side. While the origin of these swirls remains unknown, there are hypotheses. The first is that the high albedo material might be related to a cometary impact. This is kind of a crazy scenario, where an impacting comet's outgassing scours the lunar surface, the material from which redeposits in a preferential way. This view, however, hasn't been able to account for the antipodal nature of some of the swirls, arguing that it's sheer chance. Another option is that it has something to do with the solar wind, and that these magnetic anomalies serve as a kind of partial shielding for a local area. This allows for selective preservation of some high albedo material, creating the features as we see them. Interestingly, if this is the case, then this would be an ongoing process, in which case it should be something we can study over time and see changes, or alternatively, visit one of these features with a human mission to the moon. Yet another option is that electric fields can develop and redeposit dust, either by attracting or repelling it. But that would be part of a much wider phenomenon that would affect more than just the swirls, more on that in a bit. But so far, based on spacecraft observations, especially the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, the best candidate for explaining these features is that it's somehow related to the solar wind. But that doesn't explain all aspects of the phenomenon. Number 7 what lies in the lunar caves. One of the most attractive locations on the moon for human colonization are the lunar lava tubes. There are two reasons for this. The first is that they tend to occur in the boundary areas of between highland and lowland regions on the moon. This means that you have flat areas for landing spacecraft, but also high areas for better communications. More, you have mountains for mining nearby, along with basaltic plains which can be mined for things like helium-3. Lava tubes form both on the moon and here on Earth, when an open lava flow's surface solidifies, leaving a river of flowing lava beneath. Sometimes these can drain before solidification, resulting in a lava tube or cave of sorts. These can be seen from space in the case of the moon, where the lava tube's roof has partially collapsed allowing access to the system beneath. This leads to the other reason these might be highly useful. They offer natural shielding from the sun's radiation and the extreme temperature differences of the lunar surface between day and night. And these tubes can be especially enormous on the moon, with some of them having interior heights taller than the Earth's tallest buildings. You could conceivably put New York comfortably inside one of these as far as height goes, and length can also be enormous, allowing for huge, elongated subterranean cities to be built. But we don't actually have a great handle on the full extent of the moon's lava cave systems, other than there seem to be a lot of them. 
There are going to be systems where there were no collapses, leaving us in a situation where the best caves may be as yet undiscovered until we get boots on the ground looking for them. But you could also play with ideas such as technosignatures on the moon, because it would be an ideal place for an alien civilization passing through to deposit something, a monolith as it were. The aliens would know that among the most perfect, safest places for this would be a lunar lava tube. Number six, the volcanic atmosphere. The moon as we know it today is hallmarked by one glaring feature. It has almost no atmosphere at all. Walking on the moon is almost like floating in deep space, but this may not always have been the case. And the moon might once have had an atmosphere of a kind that may prove useful to this day, even though it's long gone. Once again, this is due to volcanism. In the distant past, three to four billion years ago, the then wildly volcanic moon would have been releasing volcanic gases. This is just a consequence of geology, but the question of whether the moon may have produced more gas than it lost to space is open. If it did, then it would have accumulated an atmosphere that might have persisted long term across much of the moon's volcanically active era, as long as 70 million years during the height of that period. There is some recent evidence that this might have been the case. Calculating the averages on how much gas would have been emitted show that it should have existed. If it did, that might be a resource game changer for lunar colonization. Providing volatiles and useful gases might have been trapped from that atmosphere and locked up in the shadowed areas near the poles. Number 5. The Lunar Clouds The moon may seem unchanging. Indeed, it's one thing that if we were to transport humans from any time in our past, would recognize its visage as unchanged. But the strange thing about the moon is that it actually does change, and there are a series of transient lunar phenomena of some type or types that have been observed over the centuries. One such reported phenomena are reddish clouds, often spotted over craters. The problem with observations of phenomena like this is that in the past it tended to be only by a single observer, credible though they may have been. This is an issue because the Earth's atmosphere can really distort our view of the moon, including color, and thus can appear to be something on the moon when instead the answer lies in our atmosphere. Still though, the sheer amounts of reports by credible observers of these usually short-lived red clouds is hard to ignore. And there's a strong possibility for an origin for these clouds. As we know, the moon was once highly volcanic, and may yet still have magma beneath its surface. This opens up the possibility for trapped gases making their way to the surface, and crater walls may offer a natural weak point for escape. Should that outgassing kick up dust, it might just form a reddish cloud. Ruddy soil has been seen on the moon by the Apollo missions. But as to actually proving this hypothesis, it's proven rather elusive. Another issue is that this phenomenon seems to have some kind of skew, in that human astronomers report it, but there's been comparatively little photography of it, and almost none by any lunar probes. This could be due to the phenomenon being caused by Earth's atmosphere, or it just could be so transient that a camera just hasn't been in a position to catch it. Whatever the clouds are, they remain an open mystery. Number 4. Nuclear Volcanoes The study of the American and Russian lunar samples from the days of the space race seemed at the time to lay to rest just when the moon's volcanism stopped. The rock suggested a date of around 3 billion years ago. This made sense. The moon is relatively small, and at the time thought to have cooled enough to be solid all the way through. This has changed in a big way, leading scientists to dramatically revise their view of our nearest neighbor. One point of evidence are more recent samples returned by China's Chang'e 5 mission that revised that to 2 billion years. The reason for this seems to be the composition of the solidified magma, which is different from the Apollo samples in that it may simply have been a matter of some rocks having a lower melting point due to their composition. But this has actually gotten even more complicated. Evidence from NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter showed in 2014 that a number of patches in volcanic fields on the moon seem to suggest volcanism being active just 50 million years ago, which seems almost impossibly geologically recent. Yet more evidence suggests an even younger date, as recent as 2 million years ago. 
and it's limited only to certain regions on the moon. It's thought that the only thing that could really have driven this late volcanism is a greater concentration of decaying radioactive materials, deposited for some reason mostly on the side of the moon that we see. This may mean that the moon is not completely solid as was once thought, but may actually still have huge volumes of magma below its surface that's simply too dense to rise and break through, backed up by strange readings in moonquake data that seem to suggest it. Number 3. The Buried Mass One of the biggest mysteries of the moon, and by that I mean the sheer size of it, is something located deep beneath the South Pole Aitken Basin on the lunar far side one of the largest impact craters known in the solar system. This crater shows what's known as a gravitational anomaly, where something dense and heavy is altering the moon's gravity, in this case, very likely metal, and it's huge. It's estimated at 2.4 quadrillion tons, with an area of about five times the size of the big island of Hawaii. What the mass exactly is, is a mystery, though there is an elephant in the room, so to speak. It's underneath an enormous impact crater, making the most likely culprit the iron-nickel core of the impactor asteroid. The oddity though is that it's buried very deep, on the level of hundreds of miles, leaving open that it may have some other as yet unknown origin. Number 2. Levitating Dust Fronts Over the years, lunar exploration spacecraft have photographed another phenomenon regarding dust and the moon. The reported lunar clouds can be seen anywhere, but this phenomenon only appears at the terminator, the dividing line between day and night on the moon. This phenomenon, which was directly seen by several of the Apollo astronauts and has been photographed, showed up as a crescent of light across the whole of the lunar limb. A complete mystery for years, it's now thought that the moon's soil is electrostatically charged and that as the terminator moves across the surface of the moon, it may generate a powerful electric field that can cause the dust to levitate and form a kind of moving front that passes over the surface of the moon. This would solve a number of questions about how dust distributes on mostly airless worlds, but it also poses a question. In the past, our missions to the moon were short. You land in daytime and leave before night. It seems likely that future missions will be much more longer term. So what challenges do these electric fields and this weird levitating very fine dust pose to long-term missions on the moon? Number 1. The Lunar Transient Lights People reporting lights on the surface of the moon has gone on for a very long time. In 1178, monks at Canterbury, England reported what seems like an impact, complete with an associated crater today, as a fiery light on the moon. Reports of light flashes are found in 1787, 1789, yet another in 1789 that was reported as a pair of bright short-lived lights that seemed to be made up of individual sparks. These strange observations continued into the 19th and 20th centuries. A bright speck was seen when the moon was in partial darkness in 1865. A milky light on the floor of the crater Plato was observed in 1882 and many others. Lightning-like flashes in 1931, an extensive mist observed by a famous astronomer Sir Patrick Moore in 1939, a dot of white light observed by noted amateur astronomer Walter Haas in 1941, and even as late as 1992 when a high albedo feature was measured by astronomers in Paris around the floor of the crater Langrinus, that persisted throughout six minutes of observation and again three days later in the same area, consistent with some kind of release of gas. Some of the best observations come in the form of a 1968 sighting by multiple people, including a NASA Goddard Space Flight Center astronomer of multiple starlight points on the face of the moon. Apollo 11 being contacted by Houston to take a look at Aristarchus Crater for a bright glow spotted by ground-based observers which Michael Collins spotted from space, eliminating the Earth's atmosphere as a cause. In 1958, a Russian astronomer saw some kind of eruption at Alphonsus Crater through a 48-inch telescope equipped with a spectrometer, which showed the presence of bright gaseous emissions before the spectrum rapidly returned to normal right before his eyes. Perhaps the strangest case, however, involves the crater Poseidonius, 
This crater, located at the edge of Mare Serenitatis, has had some truly anomalous behavior reported. This is an ancient lava-filled crater, with mostly just a rim still visible that was formed about 3.5 billion years ago, and features a higher albedo ray system, as many lunar craters do. The story, at least in the historical record, starts on the night of November 1st, 1791, when an astronomer noticed that this crater was not showing its usual shadowing internally, being apparently fully internally lit when it shouldn't have been. One observation of this nature isn't enough, especially from so long ago, but it happened again. In 1898, when a crater lit inside the floor of the main crater was observed to be without a shadow, even though the lunar terminator was near and it should have had an obvious one. In 1905, in the same crater lit, German astronomer Friedrich Archenhold saw a bright spot that was out of the ordinary. And again in 1968, an observer reported a hazy obscured area of the crater, but only partially. The rest was normal and clear. What's going on with that crater requires further evidence, but it does seem strange indeed that something keeps happening at that location. Thanks for listening, I'm futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently enjoying the idea that if the moon holds such unusual mysteries even after massive amounts of human observation, imagine what we'll find as we monitor the other moons of the solar system. Do places like Europa, Titan, Triton, and perhaps most interesting, Io, hold mysteries like this that we don't yet even know about? Very likely so, it's going to be fun, and be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.